Alrighty, we're gonna talk about my latest purchase. Um, I was just bored and, and browsing on the um, uh, local arms list, and um, this little thing popped out. Of course, it's a um, it's a Polish Macro, the P64 variety, um, the usual copy of the um, of the Volt PP, and it was advertised for a really good deal about half of the price that you can usually get it for and with a caveat of it does have a problem okay so I contact the uh, the seller and, and he was pretty upfront about it he says um, what what's wrong with the gun is the the safety sometimes does not want uh, basically disengage and it keeps the uh, keeps the, the trigger from from uh, engaging into the um, into the firing mechanism so basically you cannot fire the gun so uh, that's kind of odd, you know. But um, sure, for the for the price, I'll take a look. In the worst case scenario, what I mean, I'll keep it as a parts gun or try to fix myself and then try to do some gunsmithing myself. I don't know. I mean, I'm zero of a gunsmith, but hey, you gotta learn somewhere, right? So, like, okay, you know, I you know, and I went and met the guy, and he basically showed me the gun. Everything was fine. Nothing special about it's the gun itself. It's it has the usual wear, you know, n not definitely not pristine condition and it uh, <laughs> has some battle there I guess somebody dropped it or something like that you can tell <laughs> this thing has been broken off but you know it did he did gave me the the second magazine of it and um, and of course the uh, the holster which is actually leather but again not that I would actually keep this as any kind of a self-defense per se because a the the um it only holds what a six seven rounds or something like that and and the nine by 18 is <laughs> kind of a joke for the stopping power if you like but I was like, ah, okay you know i'm i would like to have you know a macro of whatever variety in my collection they're neat little guns i mean they're, they're definitely part of the history they're, they're really decent copy of you know the blowback mechanism that from from Walter and whatnot. So I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. So basically, what he showed me was that basically the one of the gun is empty. Um, that when you pull the trigger, sometimes it will actually act as the safety zone. And he actually showed to me, and the, the gun did actually exib exhibit that behavior, and you can see it right right there. And actually, when I'm on my way back from him, when I was driving it, I was actually able to replicate this behavior 100% just by disengaging and engaging the safety again. So basically, you saw me do it. So the gun will fire normally, but if you put it on safe and then disengage the safety, you can hear the safety click. But okay, now it's, it did it. But you saw it a second ago. Basically, it will do nothing. Nothing. And you can kind of put it back in action if you snap the the thing back in there we go okay and I asked him I mean did you do anything did you had anybody look at it um, he said not professionally which is you know redneck code meaning that that he was trying to fix it up and, and um, unsuccessfully and couldn't figure out what was going on so basically he says ah screw it and, and basically decide to sell it I'm like okay he did said we changed the uh, I don't know who is we but uh they changed the the firing spring and i asked him did that help he says no whatsoever um choice of ammo didn't change he says no i shot anything from brown bear to you know fiocchi and whatnot and fiocchi i want to call it and he says no different whatsoever the gun will sometimes will fire sometimes will not and that's it so he says i'm not gonna i'm, I'm tired of missing it. okay no problem whatsoever so uh on my way back home as i said you know i was kind of uh, messing with it and i realized that i can actually replicate the problem almost 100 percent just by engaging and disengaging the safety of course now when i'm trying to be famous for fixing this gun it doesn't want to do it but you saw it a second ago basically you engage the safety you disengage the safety and the gun is just not not functioning there we go again so basically he was really honest about that um, and the, the problems that the gun have but I was like okay let's let's try it so I was bored and um, I kind of started looking around the gun disassemble everything you know take the uh, um, take the whole slide off because 
I was kind of thinking maybe something is worn off or one of the springs in this whole safety mechanism is not uh, basically up to the spec anymore and doesn't want to push back or something I, I don't know nothing about these guns I never had uh, a macro before I have a whole bunch of uh, other guns that 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 <laughs> work fine so I never had to do anything with them so in an essence it was like my first time to actually do something about that and first time I actually have a malfunction in a firearm that was not induced by the the nut behind the wheel if you like um, so as as I was kind of like you know yesterday when I was when it was nice and, and bright in the kitchen, um, I was kind of looking around the gun and just just overview one thing <laughs> pop back in. I don't know if did you hear that. One thing pop back into my view immediately. I'm gonna try to show it on the camera. The side covers. They are nice and tight on the screw, but as you can t possibly tell, I'm going to show you that other view as well. This side is nice and flush. This this side sticks out just just ever so slightly out. You can actually tell it real nicely from this point on. And I was like, wait a minute. You know, it, it's one of those things. Wait a minute. This thing doesn't jive as well as this one. There is an actual physical gap in here. And I'm like, hmm, well, that's odd. Well, let's see what we can do about that. So, you know, one screwdriver later, what happened was, I don't know, was that the actual case? Because I'm going to show you another thing that's, that's kind of wrong with the, with, the, with, the, with this gun. Um, the side covers are actually, the, the, um, the right one, is actually mildly deformed either from heat or I don't know if somebody hmm dropped the gun <laughs> um, but there is an actual like slight um, lateral deformation to it if you like so what I figured out is I'm gonna show you that basically here's the um, the trigger bar mechanisms and this is I'm gonna do something else and this is the actual safety slash decoupler mechanism. And you can tell this is kind of slightly loose. And I don't know if that's supposed to be like that or not. Is there like a bushing or spring that's supposed to hold that in or out? Again, I'm not a gunsmith. I don't know much about these guns. I just know mechanics and how the things should work. Being a boy who had dismantled too many toys in his life and never put them back together <laughs> the correct way. But in essence, what happened is when you um, I'm going to engage the safety now off the off the camera because it's kind of difficult to do it but okay engage the safety disengage the safety and maybe it will actually perform for us there we go okay so safety is off ah it just did it okay but I'm gonna do it again so safety on safety off trigger no worky as you can tell that safety mechanism is still engaged and still doesn't want to do it because what it does need is slight pressure from the side to actually put everything back together and now the gun will actually fire so what I decided to do is to test that theory um, First, uh, I reassemble everything the correct way. So basically, there is there is this this little groove that's supposed to catch on the the frame and whatnot. And uh, I did that as well. And it was still not. Uh, it, w it I could still provoke the malfunction fairly uh, fairly easily. So I was not quite sure that actually that was the case. And that's where I realized that this uh, side cover also had a slight, ever so slight. Um, uh, I guess heat damage or whatnot. It ever so slightly is is bulging right around here upwards, and of course the uh, the the safety mechanism is supposed to hit right around here. So what I did as a proof of concept, um, I you grab one of those useless cars that um, always float around, you know obscure places in your house and I just placed it cut out a little piece of plastic in an essence it's like one millimeter thick and whatnot and just place it in the in in the same spot as that 
safety is gone. I am not quite sure if this is actually going to fix it or not, but I did realize that when I actually assemble everything nice and tight, then I have problem with disengaging the safety. Of course, now I cannot provoke it, but basically the safety would not pass the 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 midpoint. But in an essence, um, ever since then, safety on, safety off, always it would always work no problem whatsoever so just a little bit of research zero money involved I actually managed to put the gun in a working order so unfortunately I haven't got a chance to fire it yet because of course 9 by 18 is a little obscure cartridge and um, a Walmart doesn't carry it um, which is kind of to be expected of course they have everything the, the usual stuff but um, even the local gun shops, I went to like three of them, didn't have it. So I had to order it online and, and you know, I only got it this morning, the El Cheapo stuff. So hopefully the weather is nice tomorrow. I'm going to go and, and see if I can shoot this thing and see if, uh, if I can actually either replicate the problem without, um, without any parts being involved. Maybe it was just that uh, somebody didn't put it back together the way it's supposed to. Um, or if it's actually um, the gun actually has some damage to the um, uh, to the side covers, which in an essence it's not a big of a deal. You can always order some. They're about I don't know the 20, 30 bucks for the original ones, or you can actually buy like a nice wooden ones. But that kind of defeats the purpose of having El Cheapo firearm in your collection because it's kind of like if you start put on a uh, $50 parts on, on a $100 gun and it's like eh, I don't know about what what's the savings on that on that measure but we'll see we'll see uh, I'm glad that I actually found something that, that I can actually fix myself with what's most important zero dollars so let's assemble back in let's see if we can provoke it of course it's gonna work now Disengage. Uh huh. There we go again. Okay, so it it, it might need the uh, that shim on the side. So there you go, folks. Sometimes even the uh, you know the you can find a diamond in the rough. I mean, this is hardly a diamond, but it was definitely worth the uh, the trip and the price, and you know the half an hour or an hour that I spent kind of looking around and get to know the latest uh, acquisition in my collection. So yeah, um, when I do some shooting, I might come back and tell you my uh, my uh, impression about this. But it's it's a nice little thing. It's a nice little thing. It's it's fairly heavy. I would definitely not use it for any kind of concealed carry or anything like that. It does. It is smallish, but I have much better choices for that. Um, but again, it's it's part of the history. Why not? It always can serve as addition to collection, and. If it shoots, hey, <laughs> more to it.